Metallic bonds form lattice structures where one metal atom is surrounded by 8 to 12 other metal atoms. So you can see here that each metal atom is surrounded by a handful, but when you think three-dimensionally, uh, we can get a lot more atoms to surround each one. Electrons that surround the metal atom are collectively called the electron C. So you can see here where they're just kind of randomly dispersed between the metal cations. The electron's ability to move freely caused the model to look more like this, where it's just a C and they're just kind of moving back and forth. It's more of a haze of electrons. The electrons are called delocalized electrons because they are free to move from one atom to the other. Okay, remember these are all valence electrons that are added here, not any others. The more electrons that the metal can give, the stronger the bond. So the ones with the most valence electrons are going to have the strongest metallic bonds. So properties include malleability, so it can be hammered into sheets. So you can see here where the metal cations are able to uh, kind of shift in their formation because the electrons are not fixed to a certain cation. The second property is ductility, where they can be formed into wires, where you have the same property here. Uh, because those electrons can move, it allows the cations to uh, deform. They're also good conductors of heat and electricity. You can see here that the electrons are moving from uh, right to left down the wire, and it's this movement that carries the heat uh, in a metal, and it carries the electricity down the wire. Uh, when these electrons are able to move, they're the ones that are carrying the charge. So movable electrons is why these metals are such great conductors of heat and electricity. Alloys are when different metals come together to form a stronger metallic substance. So here you have a gray metal and a copper metal. Uh, and the copper is going to fill in some of the holes. And they do this at random, so there's no real formation to it. But there are two types of alloys. The first type is called a substitutional alloy where metal atoms, metal atoms are replaced by other atoms. So here we have all the red ones and then there, some of them are replaced by blue metal atoms. The second type of alloy is called an interstitial alloy where smaller metal atoms fill the spaces between the larger ones. So again, we have all these red atoms and then we're gonna put the smaller green ones in between them and both of these make stronger bonds Created using Powtoon.